five, the first leg of the Quad E is the James Bogues Premium Handicap over 1200 metres. It's a very competitive event. The horse we're going to look at in replay is number seven, the ninth hour, making a winning debut at Bunbury on the 18th of January. Deeper out by Rosita, Nabba Gem, Alma Jazz at the head of the others, a rails run there for Falion Machine. Coming to the 200 though, and he livens up the lead of the ninth hour. Blackwood Fly looming as its danger, and still sticking on his sweet dream, and the ninth hour still at the 100 though, holding them. The ninth hour is responding well. This is a good debut and an early double for Chris Ganjemi. Onto the line goes... The, the ninth hour is a talented half-brother of Lestake Stakes winner Conservatorium, and he did overcome greenness to make a triumphant debut, as you saw in the replay. He's the very marginal top pick in what is probably the hardest race on the entire card. Other horses worth considering here, number five, Very Angry Gal, ran on strongly behind Lady Lejeune last week, and it's clear that Simon Miller, who's bang in form, has got this filly back on track after her injury hit Julie Vile campaign. Number six, Cheston Flyer, registered really decent figures in winning a Bunbury Maiden, and he's likely to jump from the barriers over his true odds because of his connections, doesn't come from a high profile stable. And number three, Rebellion Air resumes without the benefit of a barrier trial, but does have William Pike on board, and he does possess decent ability. Pike, he has won on this horse before. Race number five, my on top selection is number seven, the ninth hour, from number five, Very Angry Gal, number six, Cheston Flyer, and number three, Rebellion Air. Race number six is the main event at Ascot. It's the scenic blast stakes over 1,200 metres. It's a listed race, and the champion racehorse of 2009 will be on track to see them go round. The replay horse is Rebel King winning a trial at Lark Hill on the 29th of January. Planet now Rebel King just moved up stylishly our wider on the track and dashed up and hit the front our wider on the track and trying to rally into the straight we have Roger the Roman then came Wayside and Storm Trade Rebel King he goes to the lead he ambles away and Rebel King's going to race clear as they head to the line and win by about two second Rebel King has had some pretty serious feet issues so it's a massive positive that his trainer Darren McAuliffe has removed the bar plates off the gelding. This is not a strong addition of the Scenic Blast Stakes with many of his rivals probably preferring less than the 1200 metres so Rebel King goes on top here. One of the horses that may like 1200 metres is number one battle hero. He won the Summer Scorcher over 1000 metres. That was on New Year's Day, but he has won up to nine furlongs, so he should handle the six furlongs with consummate ease. Number eight, Red Aura, took out the Munger Up Sprint on his first start for Steve Wolf down at Mount Barker. He's certainly back in decent form, and that was over 1300 metres, but there are significant queries about the value of that win. And number four, Volkov gets back in her races, but there will be speed here. She will have the opportunity to run on strongly, but she is a little bit of a tease. The feature race, I want to go with number seven, Rebel King to beat number one, Battle Hero, eight, Red Aura, and then number four, Volkov. Race number seven at Ascot is the Amelia Park Lodge handicap over 1,400 metres. The replay horse, well, it had to be Verve de Vega winning at Ascot last weekend. Front as it turned for the judge, coming to the 300, Verve de Viga, eight lengths in front of Harry Thomas, Royal Command and Storm Dancer with 150 to go. You'd think it's home, Verve de Viga. Royal Command is charging late, the post is coming, Verve de Viga is off its feet, Royal Command is coming, but it'll be all in vain. And Verve de Vega maps as leading again under Taylor Stone, Perth's leading apprentice jockey this season who rode the gelding to absolute perfection seven days ago, pulled the pants down of everybody, including William Pike. This horse has got the ratings to win again here, and he may have company early on from the pest that his Baraki beats, but certainly goes on top, just hoping that Baraki beats doesn't do what he sometimes does, and they go a little bit too quick. Number three, Kuwi Knights came from the clouds to prevail at Pinjarra Park. Chris Parnham sticks with this eight-year-old gelding, not too concerned about its age, it's in career best form. Number 12, West 54th made it two wins from three starts when taking out a midweek race last month, and he's bred to be even better over 1,400 metres. And number five, double digit, looks set to peak third up, but Alan Kennedy's gonna have his work cut out from the, uh, from the outside gates. Otherwise, I would respect this horse a hell of a lot more. Race number seven at Ascot, my on top selection, is number two, Verve de Vega, from number three, Cougar Knights, number 12, West 54th, and number five, double digit. Race number eight brings down the card at Ascot. It's the Tab Touch Handicap, over 1,200 metres. The replay horse is the last start winner, Royal Missile, winning at Ascot on the 20th of January.
Back inside of those towards the rail. Then Valdere, Valdera and further back Royal Missile. At the 200 though, Tenenden tackled on the outside by Marshand and now letting down. Look at Royal Missile erupting it. Royal Missile stormed up and grabbed the lead. This is over. Royal Missile comes away. They backed it with confidence and she delivered it. Royal Missile has been handed the widest barrier for her next assignment, but she certainly has the potential to improve upon her first up performance, which we saw in the replay. William Pike certainly believes in her, and Simon Miller's yard is churning out winner after winner after winner. Goes on top in what is a competitive heat. Number eight, Kapanda maps the best of the leading chances, and you can certainly put a pen through its last effort because it missed the start and then had to race outside of its normal pattern. Number one, more races may go to the front under Taylor Stone, and if there are traffic problems back in the field, he certainly has the ability to capitalise on the carnage. And number four, Linians performed nicely in his recent barrier trial, and he has put up decent numbers fresh previously in what were much harder races than this one. My on top selection in the final race of the day is number 10, Royal Missile, from number eight, Kapanda, number one, more races, and number four, Linians. It's now time to look at our best bets on the card. We were two from two on Wednesday. Let's hope we're two from two on Saturday. I like uh, action number one in race number two, and I also like number two, Jackpot Prince, in race number four. It's easy to stay up to date with everything that's happening at Perth Racing. You can follow us on social media, and you can simply log on to our website. That's it for the Saturday edition of the Box Seat. Bye. Bye.